Hey, what's up? Wix here again. Episode 23, Wiring Part 2, Drive-By-Wire Conversion. Let's go. Yo, what's up everybody? Wix here again, carrying on with this STI build. Uh, in this episode, we are talking about wiring part two, drive-by-wire conversion. Have a look at this. Turn it back on. And I'm gonna put my foot down and up. Perfect. <laughs> what a long day. So, as you can see, Finally, successfully got my drive-by-wire e-throttle, e-pedal communicating with each other and it's just working, uh, which is awesome. So, for the rest of the episode, I'm going to explain how to do a drive-by-wire conversion. Um, now, I've got a Subaru, but I think this will suit most drive-by-wire conversions. If you can kind of understand what I've got written on the board, um, I kind of hit the main highlights of what you really need to be looking out for um, because it is Subaru if you've got a different car some things might be a, a little bit different I know in my setup because of my ECU it's a plug-in I needed to run an extra uh, E module a link E module so that's something extra if your computer's set up for drive by wire I don't think you need this module unsure about that 100% but I'm just going to show you anyway how I've hooked up mine and if you're thinking about converting to drive-by-wire hopefully this video can help you up so um, we'll just take a look at the board and we're just going to go through some fundamentals of some you need to know this stuff if you're going to even attempt um, doing the conversion yourself so bear in mind we've done part one which was um, planning using our tables so I know exactly where every single wire is going to go from all of this stuff from the throttle from the pedal from the e-module I know exactly where it's going on the ECU um, I have got my wires ready to go on the ECU so I'm going to show you what I've done with my new loom cutting off the old TPS plug um, that ran my cable throttle and now I've installed the new plug running the new six pin uh, plug for the throttle um, so yeah let's take a look at the board drive by wire conversion okay so two things you definitely need when you're going hang on okay so all right, let's have a look. So two things you definitely need when you're doing the drive-by-wire conversion is an electronic throttle or e-throttle and an e-pedal. Um, in my particular case, I needed this part as well, a Link e-module. I am running a Link G4 Plus plugin and it didn't have drive-by-wire built into it. So I needed to run this module as well for it to work. Um, so like I was saying before, your ECU may ha already have it so you won't need that you'll just need the throttle and the pedal and you're good to go from there you need to understand these terms here tp or tps throttle position sensor and then you've got aps which is which is your accelerator position sensor so those terms are going to come up a lot that's what we've written down in our plan and that's that's what's uh, on the ecu as well so just remember those terms now you're going to have come across a TPS or TP main and a TP sub sometimes they call them TP1 or TP2 same for APS you're going to have an APS main or APS sub or APS 
one and an APS-2. So um, there'll be two signals for each one. Okay, so if we take a look at my e-throttle, so I'm running the throttle from IAG, um, which is uh, one of the, the factory throttles that they sell that bolts directly up to the process west intake. Uh, but the actual motor part where the plug is, the side piece here, where we put the plug on, um, I got it off a Subaru Legacy running the EZ30. And it comes with a six pin plug. I did have the plug somewhere, here it is. One of these plugs here. I'm not sure the name or type of this plug, but they're, they're quite common. Uh, but anyway, that's the plug that we're talking about. Now if you look closely on the back, where you can see this little square here, which is pretty much identical to what you would Google if you were Googling what a plug looks like. It always has the square here. Now there was about a week where I was getting confused that I thought the square meant this little, the little part that you squeeze to undo the plug. It's not that part. If you flip it over, they're talking about these two prong bits and pieces here so when you see that make sure those pieces are on the top and then it's numbered from left to right one two three four five six if you zoom in close enough I've got bad lighting in here but they are numbered um, but it is putting your eyesight to the test but they are definitely numbered one to six okay and this part here took me uh, at least a week to find out because it's a little bit confusing on the internet but I would like to say I'm 90% sure that most Subaru drive-by-wire plugs are generally going to be, this is the pin out here for them. Um, I could be wrong for maybe the later models. I think this came off of maybe 2006 to 2009 or 2011. So I would say that most of these are going to be the same. But anyway, that's your pin, pin out for that plug. So one is your motor positive motor being the motor on the um, uh, the motor inside the throttle motor positive two motor, motor negative three ground and i'll put sensor so we want to make sure that these grounds are going to a sensor ground sensor ground is just a it's a ground that is run off your ecu so when you say sensor ground it's not to the body of the car you've got to wire it back to the ground on the ecu Okay, and then we've got number four, TPS sub. Five is your five volt supply. And number six is your TPS main. So those are those two TPS signals that I was talking about. So four is sub, six is your main. Pretty straightforward so far. Figuring out which way this plug, plug went and figuring out these pins only took me about two weeks. So, um... Nice and handy for you, there it is. All right, we'll come over to the e-pedal. Now I'm using the Mazda RX-8 pedal. And funnily enough, it takes this plug here. Exactly the same plug, which is awesome. Um, again, it's numbered, but upon Googling the pinout for a Mazda RX-8 plug, they don't number theirs, they letter them, and they letter them backwards. So, that's actually not right then. Let me fix that. That would be six, five, four, three, two, one. Okay, six being so same same thing with this plug. That look the diagrams come with that little square same thing again it's the two prong that's that's the best thing i can call them the two prong things on the top looking at it that way and it's numbered they're still numbered maybe the mazda ones aren't maybe they are lettered but i've bought a brand new plug um, not from subaru and it still came numbered so it's still numbered one two three four five six but the letters go that way a b c d e f and this is the pin out for a Mazda RX-8 pedal. So A, which is number six, 
5 volt, B is sensor ground, uh, so remember sensor ground meaning that one needs to go back to the ground on the ECU, C is your APS main, uh, and then it repeats D 5 volt, E ground, sensor ground, and F is your APS sub, so those are the two signals for the accelerator. All good. Right, that's two out the way. Last one. So last one is this little E link E module that I needed to purchase. And down here it comes with a an amazing pinout wiring diagram. Coloured and everything. It's real easy to follow. Makes it so much easier. It comes on the Deutsch plug. 8 pin Deutsch plug, number 6 we're not using, it comes blocked off, so half of it comes already wired, you've just got to wire the other half of the plug in, and then this is their layout for their, for this um, plug here, so one that needs the, a full battery 12 volt to 14 volt supply, number 2 is the motor positive, motor still being the motor that goes on the throttle body, so motor positive, and then these next three, three, four, and five is your e throttle signal. Uh, sorry, number three is e throttle enable. Or on the ECU, it's called relay one. Number four is e throttle signal two. Five, e throttle signal one. Six is not being used. Seven is motor negative. So that's that motor. And eight is a ground. Now for this ground, I haven't put it to a sensor. I've been told that just grounding that one to the car will be fine. So that I've done that, and as you saw at the start, it still works perfectly. So when you're brand new to doing this type of stuff, especially with this drive-by-wire conversion, it is pretty full on. Um, that's a lot of stuff to get your head around if it's your first time doing it, um, just like it was for me. So hopefully I've just made it real simple. These pinouts of whatever plug you have, these are must-knows. You need to know this stuff, otherwise you'll never, you'll never get this thing going. So I was lucky enough that I asked a few mates um, and they kind of led me in the right direction. And again, as you saw in the video, everything works. So I got away with it. Um, hopefully, yeah, hopefully when you buy some plugs you're able to download the pinout for it as well which will make life a little bit easier it'd be so amazing if they all came like that that's just awesome all right so from here what do we what do we do next from here we first of all we've got two more jobs one we need to go wire it up and two we need to change the ecu to match our plan that we did in part one so let's let's start with this one so let's jump over to the computer and I'll show you how easy it is to change to change your inputs and outputs around so that it matches the table so that we can start finding out which pins we need to access um, so we can go wire it up Okay, so here we go. All right, now I'm just looking at my table. Here's a picture of my table. First part I'm gonna change are the analog volt settings. So in there you can see that I, that's where I can access TPS sub, TPS main, APS sub and APS main. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to access those, change them, we're gonna label them so they say what we want them to say um, and then that's about it for that part so what we're going to do is so remember this is a this is the link software for the G4 plugin G4 plus plugin so I'm going to access ECU settings it's a analog input so we'll click that and then I'm going to go down to so on my table input output table I've got analog volt 2 is TPS sub so I'm going to double click on 
and the A in Bolt 2. I'm going to bring up this box here. So um, I need that to be, at the moment, is TP main. So this is from the old um, cable driven. So because it just had one throttle um, signal, now we've got two. Um, so this one is not the is, is not number two. It's going to be uh, it's not main. It's going to be the sub. So I'm just going to double click in there. One, two, three, clap. One, two, three, clap. Okay. So remembering this is the link G4 Plus software. Um, and before I jump into changing these settings, we'll just have a quick look at this table that I've made, input output table. So if we look on analog volts, that's where we can access the TPS sub, TPS main, APS sub, and APS main. So that's what we need to go change. Um, you can kind of see on these analog settings here that um, it's got a few factory sent, um, settings. I think I've already played around with some of them. But anyway, we're going to change it to what we need it to do. So. We're going to click on ECU settings. Um, so it is analog inputs that we need. Double click on that. And so the first one is analog bolt 2. So let's come down. At the moment it's MAF. So I'm going to double click that. And I'll get this little box here. So real easy to change it. At the moment it's TP main. So I need it to say TP sub or TPS sub. So I'm going to double click in function. Function is the, it's the function that selects what you want this particular input or output to do. So as you can see, when you double click on it, you've got a few options on, on what you can assign this, um, this input or output. So that's the one we want there, TP sub, double click that. So now it's TP sub and where it says label, it still says MAF, I'm going to change that. I'm going to call that TPS sub. All right. I'll just move that out of the way for now. So we can see on here as well, AN2 TPS sub. Perfect. Matching our table already. So let's carry on, go down to analog vault 3. ECU settings, double click on a in bolt 3 it'll just change this little screen here that we've got um, it is already TP main let me just double click it make sure double click it again double click the label TPS main okay let's do the next one getting a roll on now analog fault 5 is APS sub so analog vault 5 is off so let's click that one so let's function and APS sub is 5 just looking at the table let's label it APS sub and last one for this part analog vault 6 is APS main function APS main let me triple check that. Analog bolt 6 APS main. Yep. APS main. Okay. Let's close this view. Okay, so we can check here that one is map sensor according to my table. TPS sub is 2, TPS main is 3. Number 4, we've got oxy but on my table it's oil pressure so while we're at it i think i might go and change that one then that way all the analog inputs are done so analog bolt 4 on my input output table i've got analog bolt 4 is oil pressure so there's oil pressure right there 
Uh, I'm going to call it an external oil pressure because it's coming off my new Bosch sensor. And that's making a noise because I don't have enough characters, too many characters. External oil pressure. All good. Number four, external oil pressure. What is that lamb? Not sure what lamb is, I'll just check that one more time. Might be uh, lambda. Not sure what that stuff is. I've assigned it, I've labeled it, that's all I need to do at this stage. Uh, so carrying on. Uh, number five, APS sub. Yep. And number six, APS main. Awesome. All our analog channels are set. Now, the other three signals that we need are the ones that come off the link E module. So here's a picture of that wiring diagram. And you'll see that it's the green, brown, and white cable coming off it. Signal two, signal one, and enable. So we need to go set those, and those are using the auxiliary outputs. Those are using the auxiliary outputs of the ECU. So we'll close the analog ones, go to auxiliary outputs. All right, and I think a lot of this stuff is your factory stuff of how it comes um, when you install it in the car. So, where are we? What we might do is, since we're since I'm at it, I might as well change all of these ones as well. Okay, so just here's a picture of the input output table. And just going through the list, auxiliary output one is our VVT solenoid left hand. So I'm going to change it from fuel pump. And I'm looking for VVT cam solenoid. There we go. Do you want to clear inlet target table to all zero and set the access to default values? Uh, no, I don't want to do that. I'm going to label it. VBT cam. I wonder if I can fit all this in. VBT cam solenoid left hand. Next one, number two, auxiliary number two. Here's the other side. I'm looking for VVT cam solenoid. Cam solenoid right hand. Um, number three, ETS1, East Throttle Signal 1. So there's our first one. So I'm looking for, I think it says, I'll know when I see it. There it is, East Throttle Signal 1. So number three is signal one, ETS one. Yep, that's cool. Um, P throttle signal one. Cool. All right, where are we up to? Number four, TACO. That should be factory because I've left it like that on purpose. It is. Yep, TACO. I might just put Taco, so, it, so I know I've done it. All right, box five. ETS number two, E throttle signal two. I think that's down here. E throttle signal two. Let's label that. Next one, output, auxiliary output six, uh, ET enable or relay one. So this one sort of tripped me up as well because obviously on the wiring diagram, it's just called enable, uh, which is auxiliary six. So let's access number six function. Now, as you can see, there is no enable. There's no E throttle enable. No, nothing. So, after pulling my hair out, I've realized that when they say enable, 
and what they're doing is they're activating this relay East throttle relay one which I can't remember how to explain it but when I remember it I'll let you guys know later but when you see enable we are going off E throttle relay one so you are enabling relay one so I'm just going to label that E throttle enable Cool. two more output auxiliary output seven and tank fuel pump so number seven so I'm going to say there should be one called fuel pump yep I'm going to call this in tank fuel pump <clears throat> so this one here is just the normal one that's in sitting inside my fuel tank um, and then I'm going to do my external fuel pump somewhere else. Last one for this one that's available, auxiliary 8, is my wastegate solenoid or boost solenoid. Call it boost solenoid. Link that view. Okay, so this part over here on the auxiliary, A1, VVT cam solenoid. I was trying to move that, but it didn't. One and two is VVT cam solenoid, left hand, right hand. Auxiliary three, E signal one. Four is TACO. Five, E signal two. Six, E throttle enable or relay one. Auxiliary 7 and tank fuel pump <clears throat> and auxiliary 8 is my boost solenoid. Um, the rest like for external pumps I am stealing positions of other functions in here which I'll cover later but for now this is our three that we were after on this side E throttle signal 1, E throttle signal 2 and E throttle enable. So now that that's all set up so we've got those ones set up and we've also got the analog channel set up. Um, now what we can do is head over to the ECU and we can start laying some wires down. So I've already laid my wires down in the loom, but I'll just go over it so you kind of know how I've got it laid out and you can see it, what it looks like. Okay, so I thought just before we go look at a bunch of wires, those pinout diagrams, I've highlighted in green where each of those wires go so we can imagine this plug has all these six wires on this end of the plug the green is where it goes on the other side of that plug so if I start from the throttle plug one two three four five six pins first one motor positive that one goes to the now I've written LEM LEM for link E module number two which is this one here. So number two, this pin here, this pin will go to number one on the throttle. So I link those two together. Um, so I've put throttle, throttle plug number one. Motor negative, limb number seven. So link E module number seven, which it clearly says there. Motor negative, throttle plug number two. So those two link with each other. These ones are pretty easy, ground sensor, so I just make sure that this number three pin goes straight to a, a sensor ground on the ECU, on the ECU itself. Okay, now we get into our signals, TPS sub, so remember that was an analog two, and I've written B136 pin number one, so that's the plug and the pin, so that's that one there, number four TPS sub. I wire this pin or this wire here goes to plug 136 pin number one. Five, five volt supply. Again, that's pretty easy. Once you've found your five volt supply, pretty much everything links into it. My ECU's got a few, a few of them. Um, so pin number five or wire five straight to the five volt supply on the ECU. Last one for the throttle, TPS main. So we've just programmed as well 
that is analog bolt 3 and that's plug B136 pin number 20 so that once you've done that that's your throttle plug finished I meant to have work tonight but it, as you can hear the rain is coming down so I'll talk a little bit louder and finally get some time to do some video okay so now we're on to the plug for the pedal again six pin plug it is lettered so and this one's a lot easier if I can do it this way we can see that A and D are both 5 volts so I can actually put pin A and D put them together and goes to straight straight into uh, one 5 volt which is the ECU 5 volt um, supply just the same as that one down there or any other 5 volt supply I find same with B and E so those, those pins there can tie those together because they're both sensor ground so that's all good the only two that really need their own is APS main so we assign that to analog volt 6 plug B134 pin 5 so what was that one? C this one here so that's got to go to plug B134 5 and that'll put us onto analog 6 and the last one F which is our APS sub analog 5 which is plug B134 pin 6 so that's where that one goes once I've done that that's the pedal finished and then in my case it's just this link E module LEM I've called it um, still pretty simple so we've got seven pins in this one eight pin plug but we're not using number six okay so number one is a 14 volt positive supply so I've linked that into um, just the ignition wire that I found so when I turn the key on it gives it full power um, motor number uh, so pin number two obviously we've already linked that one that's already hooked up to our our throttle number one because it's the positive for the motor these three here are our signals so we've got the enable signal two signal one which is three four and five so obviously we're following the same trend ox six b134 pin five that's not right i've got it twice there let me check my table ox number six ox six b one thirty four five that's right let's check out analog six analog i can't see that one a in vault one two three four APS main analog channel oh I'm a little tripped up here so I'm, yep I'm talking about analog volt 6 APS main I've got a feeling that is on the oh it is too so that one's not right I'm going to write expansion loom number two okay so just rewinding a little bit going back to the Mazda plug this one here, C, APS main. That means analog volt 5, APS sub. How did I get that? AN volt 5. 
And Vault 5. Yep, that's right. There. That's, but that's not right. That's right. There. Okay, so maybe that was a good example of why having this having this plan is so helpful. So I've got that's my plan, and these are my pinout diagrams. Now what I had done was I was putting these ANs to the same as what these aux ones. So I'll finish this one off. E throttle signal one is aux five B one thirty four six. E throttle signal one. Ox 3, B134, 22. So I had some of them same on these uh, analog channels. We're pointing to the same pin. Lucky I realized that because on this particular one, that volt 5 and 6, that's 5 and 6 there. So I've put X number 2 because it's my expansion connector number 2. That's where those ones go. So, yeah, hopefully that was a good example that once you've got it laid out like this, you pretty much know where every single pin goes in the car. Um, it cuts the time down in there. Um, I hate staring at wires. Down on my knees, staring at wires all day. Um, this will cut your time down in half, definitely. So. If you can do this, I've spent a few days trying to, one, wrap my head around it, learn it inside out, and then understand where I need to go. Um, this is half of the conversion pretty much complete. The other half is just to go and do what we've decided up here. Um, so yeah, just want to emphasize that if you can plan it. These are for someone who has never done this before. Um, all you experts out there will probably know this like it's the back of your hand but uh, this is specifically for someone who's never done wiring before and especially a drive-by-wire conversion planning side is all done now I just go and do that down there okay so in one of the other episodes you would have seen me I installed the pedal and so I've already installed the loom that I've made for that. So that's plugged in at the moment. And this is the other end of it right here. So you'd know that that was a six pin plug, but we've only got four wires. So reason for that is on the plug, it's two five volts and two cents of ground. So I've just tied them in to each other. So I've got these two here, but it's actually running to four pins, two five volts, two grounds. Then the last two, um, I've just labeled red is my APS-1 signal and black is my APS-2. Uh, so APS remember being accelerator position sensor. So I need to hook those up. So those are ready to be hooked up properly. Um, today I also spent some time making, kind of making and altering my old loom for the throttle. So I've got rid of the the other Nissan TPS that I had for my cable throttle and I've put my new plug on so this is a brand new plug um, and I've kind of tidied up the loom a little bit so there's another plug on that end that just sits over there beside that plug allows me to disconnect it and I want to pull the engine out and I don't need to move this loom at all so on here I've got the throttle the oil and I broke my water plug today so I've got I've got to grab a new one tomorrow finish that off and then I can tidy that up don't really like that look where you can see wires this is the look here that I like where it's just clean like that I'm not sure how I'm gonna do that but I'll try and figure something out so yeah this is my little loom that I made and then as well as that I plug this in, sit you down there. I 
Okay, so that's all plugged in. I've got to get one more pin so I can put that one in the plug. Then tidy that up. Uh, but that's all linked in with so far. The plug that goes to my Link E module, which is I've decided to put right there. So you'll just be able to see it. Didn't really know where else to put it. Um, yes, yeah, so all the wires that need to go. So what else is in there? TPS1 main and sub it's all running to the ECU so that'll be these wires here that I've linked in so this was all prepped all these are all labeled so I've pulled the labels off once I've linked them but these were all what I done in part one getting my ECU prepped along with all the planning and stuff so now I can just link stuff straight away so the only wires I've got to go is a ground four wires ground and then I've got my signal one, signal two, and enable wire, which are all labeled in here. So what I'll do is I'll spend some time just hooking all these up, soldering, heat shrinking, removing all these labels. Might leave them on, or I might remove them. They're a bit close to the ECU, I might remove them. I'll get all that done. Tomorrow I will get another pin to finish that off. And also sort out another water plug and see if I can get something to hide that a little bit. Um, I'll also link up the pedal wires and then when it's all finished I shall... the throttle is at Toby's at the moment getting polished. Um, hopefully he'll be finished that tomorrow. I'll get it back, hook it up. I'll just sit it up here and plug it in here turn the car on, turn the laptop on and see if we it still works hopefully it does okay so finally got my throttle body back off Toby um, so I've got it hooked up just sitting on uh, on top of the engine bay for now I've got my new loom on so now it's time for the test to see if it still works like I did at the start of the video um, and I'll probably show you um, or oh, I'll go through how to calibrate your pedal and your throttle body uh, they've got to be done separately and then the table to check to make sure because once they're calibrated they still don't they still it still doesn't work off that you've got to enter some numbers in the table if you haven't already got some so uh, let's take a look at the throttle body anyway all nice and polished Toby does a, a pretty wicked job, I don't know how he does it around all these nooks and crannies um, but I'm really really happy with that so um, I've got my loom here that I've made up um, it's just plugged into here for now um, so I'll tidy that up once we start hooking stuff up so that's all plugged in I'm ready to turn the car on so we'll turn the key on All right, so I'm in the pilot seat. Laptop ready, car's off, so let's turn the key on, get some power. All right, now we need to connect our laptop, which is uh, F3. This little message here, you probably can't see that, but uh, I've made some changes on here and it's just asking, do I want to apply that to the ECU? Uh, I'm gonna say yes for now. Okay, and here we are. Okay, all ready to go. So you probably can't see what I'm doing since I'm holding the camera. Um, I would do a computer shop, but I kind of want you to see what I'm doing and what I'm doing on the laptop. But um, I'll narrate it as I go so you can hear what I'm doing. So I've gone to ECU settings. I've gone to electronic throttle drop that down and there's one called accelerator position sensor so i'll double click that that'll give me this little box here and there's a little spanner there which is kind of like the calibration option 
so this is just saying make sure you've got it all hooked up okay all right press pedal down all the way down next release pedal next and done now if i push the pedal up and down those arrows should move those two there are the ap main and ap sub so they're working pretty good so now we can move on to the throttle um, so i go back into ecu settings um, i'm in electronic throttle i look for e throttle one and i'm looking for throttle position sensor double click that looking for the spanner again to calibrate so here we go double click same sort of message make sure everything's all good let's press ok and probably can't uh what i might do is i'll i'll come around the other side push ok and then we'll see what the throttle does okay so I'll press ok here we are ready to go throttle bodies up there <clears throat> Let's go. Finished. Calibrated. All good. Okay, so back in the hot seat again calibrated the pedal we've calibrated the throttle had to wipe a, a clean spot on the window put the throttle on the box so we can see it um, but what we need to check before they can talk to each other is the table so i'm going to go into ecu settings and under throttle position sensor uh, there is e throttle setup and the next one down says e throttle one target now when you double click that it'll bring up this little table here now hopefully yours has got some numbers in it um, i think i pushed the wrong button when i first loaded mine um, and it, this table was zeros all the way through so when i calibrated the pedal um, and the throttle that was successful but when i went to go push the pedal nothing happened on the throttle and it's because this table was empty so i've asked the mate to flick me some numbers Let's do a quick sweep through. They're all the it's all pretty generic at the moment. It's just to get the car started. And hopefully the tuners will fine-tune this when they get their hands on it. But anyway, what I'm saying is I've got a bunch of numbers in there now. Which is kind of like saying when I push the pedal down, you do this. And when it gets to this one, you do this type of thing. I think that's how it goes. But anyway, once I get my clubs in here, I'm gonna push down on the pedal. And hopefully we'll see that throttle moving. Down, up, down, up. You can see the table moving at the same time. All the needles are moving. So we have successfully converted this beast into a drive-by-wire. Oh man, it's been a long day. So up and down on the pedal, you can kind of hear it. Finally, that's a win. Okay, so drive-by-wire conversion, new loom, um, successful. Um, it's it's almost midnight here on a Thursday night. We've been rained off again from work. Um, so whenever I get a spare chance, I just try and hammer, hammer some stuff on this car. Um, I was actually ready to finished this video this morning and when I went to come and test everything uh, stuff just went haywire and I've been at this all day uh, and the problem so I had my multimeter back out trying to volt test everything continuity test was my loom okay did I put the plugs in properly uh, something I noticed was originally on the loom I had it I had the 5 volt linked into the same 5 volt supply for the water temperature now I don't know if that was the cause of why it was doing some weird stuff and it just wouldn't calibrate uh, but what I've done is I've separated had to pull my loom 
um, apart, totally apart. Um, I've kept the water 5 volt supply on its own and I've run the one for the throttle, I've run it to the <clears throat> another 5 volt supply of the ECU via my expansion loom. So each expansion loom, I've got two of them, um, each one has its own 5 volt supply. So the one off the expansion loom is only um, running the throttle and my pedal and that's it. So I might keep that one alone on its own. Again, I don't know if that was the cause, but uh, I've spent the whole day on this. And again, reaching out to Jace and Salwin who have saved me with this wiring stuff. Um, and finally got a successful result. So happy that we're finally there. Um, happy I got my throttle back. Actually, I've got all my gears back. Um, so we've got the intake back at the same time. That came looking like this, but just sitting on the car kind of got dull. So I got Toby to uh, spruce it up a little bit. Same with the TGV deletes. What else did we do? Um, the radiator tanks, including the fan, fan uh, shroud on the back. And also that little, uh, what do you call it? Overflow tank that we made. And also got the, the front mount water to air heat exchange all polished up as well. And that probably concludes all the polishing done. So now I've literally got everything I need minus vacuum lines, which is probably the last thing I'll do before I put some fluids in it. But I've pretty much got 95% um, of everything to start putting the car back together. So that was it for this episode, drive-by-wire conversion success, um, part two over. Uh, I was going to do 10 parts, but I might shorten this whole thing up. The next part is part three. I'm going to be talking about how to install this one here. And this is real easy too. Cam Lambda. How to install Cam Lambda. Now I've never installed one before, um, but there's a couple of tips that I'm going to show you in the next episode that makes this pretty much like uh, less than half an hour to install, which includes um, fitting your O2 sensor, running the cables. Well, I actually don't know. I reckon it'll take me less than half an hour. I don't know if you've Recently, there's a picture going around on Facebook. There's a guy sitting, look, looks miserable under his car, and it says, What you thought was going to be 30 minutes took eight hours. So that's what happened to me today. Maybe it'll all happen when I install this. Hopefully, not. Um, but anyway, that's it for this episode. Uh, please like, subscribe to the channel. Um, if you've got any questions about drive by wire, any advice, um, any do's or don'ts that you've seen me do, please comment. Um, I do appreciate those as well. But please su subscribe. Um, still plenty more, plenty more content to come. Uh, and we'll see you in the next episode. Ciao.